morning, I'm going to take you to a text where the prophet Elisha, he had just prophesied and prayed to God to stop the rain for some time. And after praying that there would be no rain at all, there were some problems in the nation of Israel. In 2 Kings chapter 6, we see a king, Ben-Hadad. He's the king of Aram. This man attacked the city or the children of Israel. And as he attacked them, the nation of Israel, they were surrounded by a wall. So they were inside a wall. So they were under a siege in, inside the wall. They were surrounded by the armies of King ben Hadad. So it means no one was going out, no one was allowed to come in. Just like we were in isolation during the time of Mawi Peleho. They were locked inside their homes. No movement. No one going out. No one going to the shops. No Mawi Peleho coming to give you food. This time around. That's the difference. There was no Mawi Peleho coming to give you food. So the children of Israel, they were just there in their homes. Waiting to eat and finish whatever that was there in their homes. And when they had finished everything that they, were, they, they had saved, we meet now the king moving around the walls. In verse number 24, the king is so scared. The king of Israel is so scared. He's just moving around the walls, moving around the walls. And as he's moving around the walls, he meets a lady. Two ladies, they are fighting. And as these two ladies are fighting, he says to these ladies, what's your problem? The lady said, this woman, she agreed with me that we kill my, my son. We, we boil and eat my son. And after eating my son, today, because we don't have anything to eat, I'm saying to this woman, it's your turn. Let's now eat your, your son or your daughter. And this woman says, this woman has hidden now her child. That's how bad it was. They were now into cannibalism, eating human's flesh. That's how bad the situation was. So this was real scarcity. And the Bible says, as they are coming to the king, the king answered these ladies, where can I get help from you? The threshing floor from the wine press What's the matter? She answered. This woman said to me, give me your son so we may eat today and tomorrow we may eat, eat, eat my son. So, at this particular point, they are saying the donkey's head was costing something like 80 shekels. 80 shekels. And the droppings of the dove, they were taking that as food. And it was also costing something, like five shekels. That's how serious the situation was on the ground. So it's a desperate situation. It's a desperate situation. It's tough. It's a tough environment. No one can survive this. It's a difficult condition. In the midst of all this, there are people who were chased out of the city before. 
because they were lepers. Remember in the olden Israel, people who were lepers were not allowed to stay with other people. So these guys were chased outside the city. So but they were outside the city. But they knew there was hunger and famine in the city. But they are there outside. So their problem is here. When you are a leper, you are losing your flesh. As you move around, your flesh is just pa, 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 pa. They are losing their flesh. At the same time, they are hungry. They have got nothing to eat. So it's now double tragedy. No, you are losing your flesh. You have no food. They are in a disparate situation. But today I want us to do this case study on these lepers and learn a few things which I believe they will be able to help us as believers, as children of God. Let's go to chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. We are not done with those two men. We'll come back to them. But Elijah said, Hear the word of the Lord. Save the Lord. Tomorrow about this time, a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two shares of belly for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Then the captain, whose hand the king leaned, said to the man of God, If the Lord should make the windows of heaven, could this thing be? You shall see it with your, eye, your own eyes, but you shall not eat it. There were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, Why stay here until we die? If we say we go to the city, the famine is there. We will die. If we say we will, if we stay here, we will die. So let's go to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we will live. If they kill us, we will die. <laughs> Listen to this lepers. I'm saying they are losing their flesh. They can choose to, to die a decent life. But you know, see, I was saying, no, oh, Baba, oh, don't worry. Uh, these guys, they are losing their flesh. But they are choosing the impossible. They are choosing the impossible. They are saying, we want to go to, this, to the enemy's camp. Some are locked inside the city. They are fine. They have able hands. They are able physically to fight the enemy. But they are choosing to just stay in there in their homes and they are not fighting. Here are some guys. They are only four. They don't have any flesh, any muscle. But they are saying, we are not going to stay here. We are going to go into the enemy's camp and challenge the enemy right in his camp and say, if they kill us, they will kill us. If they spare us, they will spare us. I don't know if you are getting it. What I want you to know this morning is in the midst of all this turmoil, in the midst of all this that is going through, the prophet Elijah is bringing hope to the king of Israel. He said to the king of Israel, tomorrow, this time, I told you the contrast, that the donkey's head was costing, what, 80 shekels. The prophet is saying tomorrow, not next year, tomorrow this time, a share of belly will be costing only a shekel. 
Are you looking at that transition? Donkey head, 80 shekels. The prophet is saying, tomorrow this time, belly and flour, fine, no, not only flour, but fine flour. Those who know baking, they know that's what we call fine flour. That's a special kind of flour. It's an expensive flour. He's saying it will be costing only this amount. Far less. So I'm here this morning to pronounce to you that you may be thinking it's tough on your side. You may be thinking, I'm not making it. It's difficult. I'm not going to come out of this. But I'm here to pronounce to you the good news. That God, God who is able, God who is able, God who is able to tra transact, God who is able to deal with finances, God who is able to deal with money, God who is able to deal with the economy of a nation, he can just turn things around in a second. He can shift things. And those who are poor, those who have nothing, they can now begin to transact from the economy of God. And that is only going to be by faith in Christ Jesus. Yeah. You are going to transact by faith. If you don't have faith, you are not going to get anything. The prophet is saying to this man who is trying to mock, you will not eat because you are trying to mock God. You only see with your eyes, but you will not transact. So I'm here to challenge you this morning that there is a need in the midst of your difficult situation, in the midst of your finances, in the midst of your crisis, there's a need to know that there's a God in heaven who controls the economies of the world. He says he owns a thousand hills in the hills. He says he owns the silver and the gold. So why not? Depend on this God. Why not trust on this God? Why not believe on this God? That God will make a way for you. God will see you through in your situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go to your lesson number one that we pick from the Four lepers. The first lesson that we are picking here from the lepers is never allow your current status to define your destiny. Rather be defined by the word of God. These guys are lepers. They are believing God for something extraordinary. They are believing God for strength. They are believing God for favor. They are believing God for a miracle. They are going right into the enemy's camp. They are challenging the enemy. They are not going to the city because in the city there is famine. In the city they are eating human beings. In the city they are eating uh, the, 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 the droppings of the dove. But they know in the enemy's camp there, there is something because the enemy has taken some things from the Israelites and they have hidden them there. So these guys are going right into the enemy's camp. And they are saying, we are not going to be defined by our current status that we are lepers. In other words, as they were marching, they were supposed to say, I'm clean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. Whenever they see somebody, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. Get away, move away, I'm unclean. But they went right into the enemy's camp. I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. And as they were doing that, the Bible says, the enemy's camp was confused. They ran away. They left the city. Because God caused these four guys, the sound of the four guys, the sound of the bones as they were marching, the Bible says, it made a lot of noise. Since that they said, Israel have now taken some guys from the other neighboring countries. Israel has reinforced. So it means the great army is coming. It means the great army is coming. It means the great army is coming. So these guys, they ran away. They deserted their city. 
They deserted their camp. And the guys, they came in. The lepers started to move around. Oh, I want to be. But in the rest of my move around, move around. Started to taste. Taste that. Taste this and that. Taste this, that. Taste this and that. And the Bible says they took some of the stuff from the camp and then they hid it. They came again back. Started eating again. Started eating. Took some again. They hid. They hid. And then they said, ah, We are not doing right. Come on, we are not doing right. Our brothers in the city, they, they are suffering. They are eating donkey's head. They are eating human beings. They are eating all the, this kind of stuff. Let's go and tell our king that, king, there's plenty here. You can bring your people to come and die. You can bring your people to come and eat. So never be defined by your current status. For life. It's temporal. That situation is temporal. You are sick in your body. You think yeah, now that's your disease. You own it. That disease is temporal. Know that every situation in your life is a temporal condition. And because it's a temporal condition, don't allow it to define who you are. But rather be defined by the word of God. Be defined by who God says you are. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't be defined by your limitations. Some of you, you allow your limitations and your qualifications to define who you are and what you can get and how much money you can get. You allow your qualifications to do that. Don't be defined by your qualifications. Don't be defined by your, your limitations. Believe that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you can think. Number two, perspective is a matter of mentality rather than reality. Perspective is a matter of mentality rather than reality. You need to develop a mental strength as an individual. A mentality that says, I will not give up. A mentality that says, I won't give up on this. A mentality that says, I will make it. A mentality that says, I can come out of this. A mentality that says, I'll break through. You need to develop that kind of mentality as a child of God. You are not a quitter. You should not quit. You should not quit. You should always develop this never give up attitude. That's perspective that we need as a child of God. You need to see things from the perspective of God. When God says you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, you need to see yourself as a more than a conqueror. See yourself from the perspective of God. See yourself from the condition of God. See yourself from the mind of God. See yourself from the word of God. Majority of us, we are full of fear. But I like the character of these guys. Barry, if we stay here, we are going to die of hunger. If we go to the enemy's camp, they may kill us. Thank you. They may kill us. But I like how they reason. Some of them, but no. Maybe they will forgive us. Maybe they will not kill us. Maybe they, they will not kill us. The enemy of your soul always want you to believe the West. He never gives you it will be fine. Go, it will be fine. He always says, don't dare go there. 
Don't start that project. That's a no-go area. Don't start that business. That's a no-go area. No one has succeeded. Yeah. That's the enemy of your soul. He wants you to be limited. He wants to cage you into this failure mentality that you cannot make it. You cannot try it. But these guys, they are saying if we die, we die. We are, anyway, we are still going to die here. <laughs> What's the first? We are still going to die here. I <laughs> should <laughs> we are still going to die here. What's the fuss? So rather we die trying, rather we die doing something. And that's my challenge to you. Don't just sit. Do something. Try. Try this and that. Try this and that. Try this and this. You fail, get up. Try again. You fail, get up. Try again. <laughs> Try or die. Try. Oscar saw email. Hallelujah. So that's going to be important to note. Perspective is a matter of what? Mentality. Develop it. Develop the tenacity to say, I will make it. Develop that. You exercise that muscle. You exercise it. That faith, you exercise it. You exercise it. Try it with little things, a little project. Believe God for it. Okay, try it. Then you succeed. Go for another project. Extend it a bit. Try it. Don't give up. Try it. You'll make it. That's how you develop this mentality. Number three. God has the capacity to change your situation instantly. God has the capacity to change your situation instantly. Just some few hours, these guys were lepers. They were outside, starving to death. And they moved to the enemy's camp. And mind you, they did not hear Prophet Elisha. They were not there when the prophet was speaking to the king. That tomorrow this time, the belly will be costing this. They didn't hear this. Maybe you think they hear the, this from the man of God. No, they didn't hear. They were just outside there. The city. The prophet was speaking to the people of God. When they are outcast, outcast. But at least they are not people. They are useless. But as useless as they are, somehow by the grace of God, God gave them strength and decided we're going to go to the enemy's camp. And they went into the enemy's camp. And in the enemy's camp, when they get there, they are the very, they are the very uh, message, they are the very people, the vehicle that God is using, the vehicle that, is, that God is using to bring the prophet's message to pass. The very people that are despised, the very people who are taken outside the city, declared nothing. God decides, I'm not going to use any one of these in the city. I'm going to use outcast, outcast there, and God used the outcast to propel the message. That's why it's important to treat people right. Because you never know what God will use to bring your blessing. You're not hearing me. Treat people right. Because you never know what God will use to bring your blessing. Some of you, your, your blessing is attached to the very thing you despise. 
Your blessing is attached to this caca. You don't hear me. Your blessing is attached there. And you are there looking for a hunk. Looking for, for a hunk. No, 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 no. You are wasting time with that hunk. That hunk is not, that hunk is not going to bring anything that is of God. It's just going to bring the, the hungness. But nothing of God. The very people that are despised, come on, they despised. Come on, they bring the provision of God. They carry the provision of God. You will thank me one day. So we see God changing the children of Israel situation in an instant. Because the prophet said, tomorrow there's time. Something good shall come out. And those who believed, the king, this king of Israel was a stubborn king. Even when he was told this, the, the guys, one of the lepers, they are bringing the message to the king. They are saying to the king, king, it's nice there in the enemy's camp. It's just, it's just the, the doors are wide open. The king is saying, no, those guys, they are intelligent. They have hidden somewhere. They have hidden somewhere. They are just around. When you go there, they will encamp us. They will surround us and kill us. That's how doubting this king was. Somebody who, who has seen the hand of God at work. This king here has seen the hand of God at work. This very king and King Ben Hadad, the, 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 the Elijah prophesied to this man, to the king of Israel, that he may he is going to win a war against King Ben Hadad. He went there, he wiped this guy out, and when they have captured all of them, uh, the king said. What shall I do with these people? In chapter number five, what shall I do with these people? And uh, Elisha said, no, leave them, don't kill them. So this man, the king of Israel, he has seen the work of God. He has seen the hand of God. But he is still doubting. It's like most of you here, you have seen the hand of God. You've seen God working out something for you. You've seen God doing something for you. But when you are told God can do this, you still, you still say, hmm, I mean, will he? It's like most of you. But those who are outsiders, they don't have any problem. One time, man, I was in the city, and they eat, and they die. But I'm more interested in this, that God can change your situation Instantly. I don't know what it is, but God has the capacity to change it instantly because he controls nature. He controls everything. He can speak a word. He can just speak a word. He can just speak a word and everything can change. So I want you to realize this, that your situation is temporal. Your famine is temporal. Your financial condition is temporal. Your sickness is temporal. Your struggles, they are temporal. Your limitations, they are temporal. God can change them in a twinkle of an eye. If you give him a chance, if you say, God, I surrender. God, I surrender my life. In a twinkle of an eye, God is able to do it. God is able to change your destiny. God is able to change your situation. The Bible says, the following day, these guys, they went to the city. And as they are there at the city, 
the very captain who was saying to Elisha, no, can God open the windows of heaven? The very captain who was at the gate, the king said, Munna, be Komsasa at the gate. And that man was placed by the gate to be the gatekeeper. And the children of Israel came from the city. All, all of them came into the city. And the prophet has said, you will only see it, but you will not partake. So that was the fulfillment of that scripture. You will only see, but you will not put it into your mouth. That brings me to lesson number four. Learn to share your blessing with others. Most of you, God has blessed you with quite a lot. But you never want to share. You never want to share. But God has blessed you with a lot. Financially, you are blessed. But you never want to share a single thing with others. These guys, they are saying, it's not good for us to eat this thing alone. They called others to come and partake. In this church, we are not asking much from you. When we do ELS, we are saying, God has blessed you. You know what God has done concerning your life. Simply share with others what God has done for you. And we are not even saying witness to them. We are simply saying invite them to church. We are asking minimum from you. Minimum. We don't say preach to them. We don't say witness to them. We are saying invite them to church. Minimum. And majority of you, you see this as a burden. That's a difficult task. But God has done a lot for you. If I was to sit here and interview each one of you, you are going to tell me what God has done. Something good that God has done that you can share to another person, that you can say to another person, I have seen the goodness of God. I have seen the hand of God. I have seen this and that in my life. That thing you can share with another individual. I've seen the healing of God taking place in my life. That thing you can share with another individual. But we are not saying share that. Because some of you, that will be like uh, we are asking too much. We are saying invite. Hello, how are you? Who are you? My name is this, this, this. Um, may I, I invite you to church? Uh, these are the times for our church. Communicate better than a Facebook or a phone. Moga Scar or Shy. It is still difficult. So we are asking just a minimum from you. And we want to encourage you, beloveds. What God has done to us, let us share it with other beloveds. There are people out there that are dying. There are people out there that don't know God. There are people out there who are going through a lot. But you have seen the hand of God. You have seen the goodness of God. Why not share that with others? So that they may come and experience that which you have experienced. Lesson number five. Unbelief gets you nothing, but faith gets you everything. These guys who was doubting the promise of God, who was doubting the prophet, he died at the gate. People came upon him and they stampeded him and he died a horrible death because he did not believe the promise of God because he did not believe 
the word of God. I want to urge you that there is a need to have faith. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen with your own eyes. You need to have that so that you can begin to believe some stuff for God. Believe some stuff that God, I will have this. God, I'll receive this. God, I'll, I'll have this in my life. And you don't doubt. Some of you, you have received th the word pertaining to your life, the prophecies pertaining to your life, and you are doubting that word, and you are doubting what God is saying pertaining to your, to your life. You doubt it. But when you doubt it, remember, you will not receive it because unbelief gets you nothing. You will not get anything because of unbelief. But faith will get you everything. When you have faith, faith will move the unmovable. Faith will break the unbreakable. Then you will begin to experience the move of God. Then you will begin to experience the blessings of God. Most of the time we pray for things and immediately after prayer we go and we and pray everything we have been praying for through negative confession. After just coming from prayer, we have just been declaring some stuff. You've just been declaring some stuff. Declaring some stuff upon your life. And in a short time, well, you cancel everything through negative confession. But words are powerful. Whenever you speak words, they go into the future and they wait for you there patiently. And in due course, you will receive that which you had spoken. So you better speak and declare positive things upon your life. Declare them, declare them, declare them, declare them, declare them, declare them. And as you declare them, they will move into the future and they will wait for you. And in due course, you will receive because unbelief gets you nothing, but faith gets you everything. Hallelujah. Let me conclude with Ephesians 3.20. God is the creator of the universe. He says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. We serve a God who is able. He can do anything. And he can, only, he can do it even more than we ask or think. He can do it abundantly. So this morning, know that we have the creator of the universe. His name is Yahweh. He says silver and gold belongs to him. We can choose to believe his weight. We can choose to believe his promises. The Bible says his promises, they are yes and amen to the glory of God. We can choose to believe the promise of God. We can choose to say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. And you believe the word of God and you confess it with your mouth. And as you confess it with your mouth, then shall it come to pass. Then you will wait on God. Then you will wait on God until it's manifested in the physical. Let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on some life. You break the unbreakable. You move the unmovable. Let's just lift our hands to the Lord. And you just believe God. And you just declare.
Yes, Lord, give you the praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Before we close the service this morning, maybe you are there. You, are, you don't know Christ. You don't know God as the Savior. You can only appreciate God's provision and scarcity when you have given your life to God. You will see God fighting your battles. You will see God fighting for you. This morning, if you are there, you are saying, Pastor, I don't know God. I want to give my life to Christ. I ask you to lift your hand wherever you are so that I may pray for you. If you are there, you don't know Christ as your personal Savior. You can just lift your hand so that I can minister to you, so that I can pray for you. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to the Lord, all of us. Father, I thank you. I've poured my heart to your people, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus. God, fight their battle, Lord. Fight their battles, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I pray for each one of them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Whatever they are going through. Father, in the name of Jesus. I declare a breakthrough. I declare tomorrow, Lord, this time. Lord, they will receive a word. They will receive a word, oh God. A word. They will receive a word, oh God. A word, a positive word. The good news, Lord, pertaining to their situation. The good news, Lord, pertaining to what they have been asking for. In the name of Jesus, I speak, Lord. I speak it, Lord, as your servant. I declare it, Lord, as your servant. I declare it, Lord, as your servant. Those, Lord, who give for jobs in the name of Jesus. Lord, release that job in the name of Jesus. Release that job in the name of Jesus. Release that job in the name of Jesus. 
Likalababasanda. Those looking for promotions, for elevations, Lord, tonight I declare, this very day, Lord, I declare, I declare elevation, Lord, elevation, Lord, elevation, Lord, elevation, Lord, elevation, Lord, elevation, Lord, in the name of Jesus. See them through, Lord. See them through, Lord. Let them receive the good news. Let them receive the good tidings. Let them receive the grace, the grace, the grace and the scarcity, Lord. The grace and the scarcity, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen.